Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we are going to have the Hindu newspaper analysis dated 22nd of October 2022. So let us quickly look into the list of those articles that we are going to take for discussion today. So I have listed these articles for covering uh, during the Hindu newspaper analysis. So the first article says central panel to probe illegal axing of trees in national park. So in this article we will understand about which national park is in news, why that national park is in news, we will understand about the national green tribunal, we will understand about the Jim Corbett national park and we will understand some associated issues with this. Okay? So this topic is important under environment and ecology section for GS paper 3 of the mains exam. After this, we are going to look into the another article. It says, are critically endangered great Indian bustard now migrating to Pakistan? Okay. So the core topic of this article is great Indian bustard. So we will understand about what is great Indian bustard. We will understand about its scientific name. We will learn about its uh, conservation status and we will see where uh, do we find the population of great Indian bustard. And this topic is also important under environment and ecology uh, section which is important for GS paper 3 of the prelims exam. Okay, GS paper 3 of the prelims exam. After this, we are going to take another topic. It says an online fight where children need to be saved. Okay, so this topic is important. It, uh, it is related to cyber security and in this article we will understand about you know some of the important things associated with safeguarding the privacy of you know those uh, people who are below the age of 18 years we will also look uh, into you know child sexually abusive uh, like content okay so this topic is important under this topic we will understand about the rights of the child we will understand about like how you know uh, children are getting exploited across the world we will look into you know some of the agencies that are working you know day and night towards you know saving the rights of the child okay and in this article we will also understand about like what mechanisms do we have in place for safeguarding the privacy rights of children from online content okay online content related to sexually abusive material okay then next topic is related to state governments cannot enter into broadcasting on their own information and broadcasting ministry okay so in this article uh, we will discuss about okay in this article we will discuss about <coughs> an aspect where like you know the uh, ministry of information and broadcasting has released a notification and we will look into the role of prasar bharti and we will also look into like why this particular ministry has told uh, the central government state government and various organs associated with the governments at various level not to go for i mean like you know broadcasting through different uh, you know mediums other than uh, the approved you know network uh, from the information and broadcasting ministry so we will look into this article like in depth we will understand about the you know ongoing issue after this the next topic is related to terrorism so this article says terrorism is the worst form of human rights violation okay so recently i mean like you know a conference is being held related to interpol okay so we will understand about interpol we will look into like how why i mean like interpol is in news time and again we will understand the role of cbi in interpol okay we will uh, learn about what the uh, you know home minister of india has you know discussed in the interpol okay so this topic is relate, uh, relevant from the viewpoint of GS paper 3 under internal security. So with this let us look into the first article for discussion. Okay. So we will discuss the first article in detail. Now uh, before we go into understanding this article let us understand about some important things. Okay. Uh, like recently the Jim Corbett National Park was in news. Now let us understand where is Jim Corbett National Park located. Jim Corbett National Park, okay, Jim Corbett National Park, which is Jim Corbett National Park, it is located in Uttarakhand, in the state Uttarakhand. That too in Nainital district of Uttarakhand. Okay. Jim Corbett National Park is located in Uttarakhand. 
uh, in Nainital district of Uttarakhand. So this is one factual information. So why Jim Corbett National Park was in news? Because recently someone has, I mean like you know, made a complaint to the National Tiger Conservation Authority, okay. Someone has made a complaint to National Tiger Conservation Authority related to illegal cutting or felling of trees, right. Thousands of trees were cut down in this particular tiger reserve, okay, Jim Corbett National Park, okay. So, like we will understand the role of National Tiger Conservation Authority in this regard and we will understand like what actions have been taken, right. What are the things that are happening? But before this, let us understand about this Jim Corbett National Park. Okay, so Jim Corbett National Park, this is the first, I mean, like, you know, tiger reserve, the first national park to be established. Okay, so it was established as Haley National Park. Initially, it was established as H A I L E Y, Haley National Park, in the year of 1936. So this is the first national park that was established in India and here the government of India has established the you know project tiger okay project tiger was initiated in this particular national park itself in this particular tiger reserve so like you know we have a, a Corbett tiger reserve which is a bigger area and under that like we have a smaller area which is Jim Corbett national park. So Project Tiger was initiated here in, uh, you know, uh, under, in 1973, Project Tiger was initiated. And what was the role of Project Tiger? The role of Project Tiger is like, you know, to safeguard the livelihood of tigers and also to provide uh, like, you know, required habitation means like so that they get, you know, proper habitat, proper area for living, right. And apart from this, it had multiple objectives. And under this particular project tiger, right, to give statutory backing, to give legal sanctity to this particular thing, the government of India has set up a body which is National Tiger Conservation Authority, okay. Government has set up this body, National Tiger Conservation Authority. So National Tiger Conservation Authority has been established under Section 38 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, okay. Under Section 38 of Wildlife Protection Act, okay, WPA 1972. So, Project Tiger has been given a legal sanctity by, I mean like, you know, uh, by uh, establishing a body, name of the body is National Tiger uh, Conservation Authority. So, we have understood about Jim Corbett National Park, where it is located, like, uh, uh, it is the first national park in India and like you know we have discussed about project tiger and we have discussed about the uh, national tiger conservation authority. Apart from this like what has happened the national green tribunal okay national green tribunal has taken okay uh, it has directed uh, the union government it has directed uh, the you know forest official that it would direct the union government to form a committee to initiate investigation into illegal tree cutting in Jim Corbett National Park. So like you know someone a reporter that reporter has uh, I mean like approached the National Tiger Conservation Authority with a complaint and the complaint was related to illegal felling illegal cutting of trees in this particular area. So that thing has been taken into cognizance right by the National uh, Green Tribunal and so National Green Tribunal has you know told the forest officials of Uttarakhand that it would direct the central government to look into this particular affair, right, to uh, conduct the investigation, okay. So the thing is like, now let us understand what is uh, this particular body, which is National Green Tribunal. So National Green Tribunal is a speedy court, right, this is a court that has been established by the government. So it is a tribunal kind of body, tribunal kind of body, I mean like it's, it's not a completely a court it's not a, a private body it's a, it's a i mean a government body which acts as a tribunal okay so what happens like this particular body has been established under ngt act 2010 okay ngt national green tribunal act 2010 so this particular body has received statutory i mean like authority so it is a statutory body because like it has been established under an act which is ngt act and why it was established, this particular body was established for effective and uh, you know expert, expeditious disposal of cases, right? Expeditious disposal of which kind of cases? 
for disposal of cases related to environment related to forest related to you know conservation of forest and other natural resources okay so that was the purpose of establishing the national green tribunal so this particular body works under uh, like you know under the principle of natural justice it simply means that the code of civil Pro procedure okay cpc does not apply to this body this body works under you know principles of natural justice and apart from this like you know uh, like it is mandated for disposal of cases within 6 months right within 6 months it is mandated that it should dispose all the cases appeals that comes to it right and apart from this it it has five uh, five branches right uh, so far like in india like one of the branches is in new delhi then we have in bhopal pune kolkata and chennai these are the places where the offices of the ngt where the offices of national green tribunal are located okay so we have understood about national green tribunal so now apart from this we will also look into right we will also look into this particular body which is national tiger conservation authority right national tiger conservation authority so what is the role of national tiger conservation authority this particular body is a statutory body first of all this this body is a statutory body it was established under section 38 of wildlife protection act 1972 the role of the body is to take actions right that help in conservation of tigers that help in the conservation of the population of tigers in india right and this particular body right is headed by a chairman and the chairman of this body is the minister of the ministry of environment forest and climate change okay so so it's it's uh, like you know chairperson is the minister of the ministry of environment forest and climate change apart from this it's uh, one of the member will be minister of state of the ministry of forest environment and climate change apart from this there will be three members from the parliament of india then there will be a secretary right secretary of the ministry of environment forest and climate change as a member of this particular body and there will be other members so this particular body is a very powerful body so this body can take decisions you know uh, like for uh, for the sake of conservation of tiger for like you know improving the breed or, or like you know population of tiger in india okay so this is the importance of this thing apart from this like you can read the factual information from this particular report so this particular report came i mean like from a uh, from a person like who has filed case right who has filed a case or uh, like you know in the national tiger conservation authority rega uh, related to illegal felling of trees illegal cutting of trees in the you know jim corbett national park so we have discussed about that national park as well so with this let us take another article for discussion okay so this article says are critically endangered great indian bustards now migrating to pakistan okay so in this article what we are interested in learning we are interested in learning about the great indian bustard so the image that you can see like uh, it seems the image of a bird right it's it's known as the great indian bustard great indian bustard right so if we talk about great indian bustard like it has a total population of around 200 across the globe only 200 uh, i mean like you know 200 number of this particular species lives across the globe and out of those 200 like about 150 lives in in india itself right lives in jaisalmer district of rajasthan right so that's why this particular species which is great indian bustard becomes a very important species for us to understand why because like this is critically endangered species right why we we are talking about critically endangered because like if you see the list iucn international union for conservation of nature if you see the iucn red list so in the IUCN red list, they have mentioned this particular species under critically endangered category. It means like, you know, this particular species is under one of the greatest th threat of extinction. Okay, this is the thing. Apart from this, this particular species have, is, you know, mentioned under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Okay, Schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 
1972. Apart from this, it is mentioned in Appendix 1 of Sites. Appendix 1 of Sites. Then, like it is also mentioned, right, as critically endangered, endangered in National Wildlife Action Plan, under National Wildlife Action Plan. So we know that like this particular species is there in very small number, right? It, it has a very small number of, you know, uh, like a species across the world. So like more than uh, two thirds of this particular species lives in India. So that's why we need to protect, we need to conserve this species. So according to this particular report, right, that was there in the newspaper. So this particular report mentions that one of one of the great Indian bustard has been recently sighted, recently seen, right, in Pakistan. Okay, it was recently seen in Pakistan by one of the wildlife photographers, like uh, who is based in Pakistan. Okay, so he has uploaded the image. So this, I mean, like, you know, although he did not mention in his uh, like you know uh, like uh, post that like it came from India but the thing is like people who are Indians who are from India so they are thinking like you know this particular uh, bird might have flown might have you know migrated from India to Pakistan right so that, that's that's all about this so the thing is like what is important for us to learn it is important for us to learn the conservation status of this particular species because many a times in prelims exam UPSC directly asks what is the, I mean, like, you know, IUCN status of uh, so and so species? So, uh, like, uh, again, for a quick recap, the Great Indian Bustard is critically endangered under IUCN red list. It has around 200 is, uh, population, like, you know, the total number of, uh, you know, total number of this species across the world is only 200, out of which, I mean, like, you know, more than 150 lives in India, in the Jaisalmer district, okay? So, uh, like it is there in India's desert national park, okay. So, great Indian bustard is found in India's desert national park. So, you need to identify where is desert national park located, right. There we find the species population. So, under IUC and red list, it is mentioned as critically endangered and under <coughs> schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, it is mentioned under schedule one then like under sites right it is mentioned under appendix one means like it has been given the highest priority when it comes to you know conservation when it comes to i mean safeguarding this particular species and it has been listed as one of the most you know threatened species across the world this is the thing okay <clears throat> so this is uh, like if you read this article you will understand but like you know this is the crux of this article you don't have to go, you know go into the detail what is mentioned in the article itself right so if we talk about the great indian bustard it is the state bird of rajasthan and it is considered india's most critically endangered bird and is protected under wildlife protection act okay so its population of about 150 in rajasthan accounts for 95 percent of total world population so in india itself like we have you know around 95 percent of uh, the total species of this particular uh, you know uh, total population of this species after this we will look into another topic this topic is also very important why it is important because in this article we will understand about csam csam stands for child sexual abusive material so we will understand what do we mean by csam after then we will understand about you know some of the agencies across the world I mean that are working day and night for safeguarding like you know safeguarding child from uh, like any kind of you know uh, like uh, leaking of privacy I mean when we talk about child sexual abusive material these are pornographic videos these are pornographic for uh, like images that are posted that are posted on digital platforms so the thing is like in India if we talk about in India in India, like it is allowed, uh, you know, for people to watch pornography related things uh, of those uh, people like who are above the age of 18 years, right? Uh, means like above the age of 18 years pornography, like you can watch like, you know, privately in your home, you can download, you can transfer, you can watch like that. But the thing is like when it comes to, you know, uh, pornographic videos of, of, you know, young people like who are below the age of 18 years, seeking of this uh, those videos or vi uh, or images or transferring of those videos or images or sharing uh, i mean like you know through digital means um, like is a punishable offense 
right is a punishable offense so in this article they have you know mentioned about some of the steps that are taken by central bureau of investigation okay so recently what has happened the central bureau of investigation has conducted some operations okay one operation was conducted by them in the month of november and recently uh, uh, not november uh, november 2021 and recently in september 2022 they have conducted another operation so the name of the operation that was uh, conducted by the central bureau of In investigation is make chakra okay so this particular operation this operation is against the online circulation and sharing of child sexual abusive material using cloud based storage okay so uh, this is an operation that was conducted by central bureau of investigation apart from this the central bureau of investigation has conducted a similar operation right it was code named as operation carbon okay operation carbon was also conducted to identify those people like who who are transferring child sexual abusive material uh, through online means okay and uh, cbi has arrested some of the people they have put them behind the bars but the thing is like we need to understand what is uh, what is this child sexual abusive material what are the safeguards available to the you know uh, those children and like what are different agencies across the world are doing right for safeguarding the ch uh, children against any such activities okay so if we talk about the legal status of uh, watching viewing pornography etc in india okay if we talk about that thing so in india viewing of adult pornography in private is not an offense okay it is not an offense but seeking browsing downloading or exchanging child pornography is an offense punishable under the it act okay it is uh, uh, like it is punishable under the it act however like you know internet service providers are exempted from liability of any third party data if they do not initiate the transmission now here we need to understand that like there are multiple companies like you know like who provide servers for example godaddy there may be amazon web services there may be you know uh, like google cloud based storage so these companies these big big companies they are not themselves i mean like you know uploading these contents or sharing these contents they are just providing the uh, this storage service for people so like you know if on their platform some pornographic material is there so these big companies are not, not liable for it uh, who are liable those people who are transmitting it who are uploading it right and and these big uh, players like you know who are providing storage services if they transfer the material themselves right if they transfer child sexual abusive material then they they become liable right they be, become liable for punishment under the it act so now we will understand about what is it act so we have an it act 2000 okay so uh, it act information technology act was enacted in 2000 and like this has given right you know multiple rights and and uh, you know it has mentioned about multiple thing associated with uh, information technology okay so like you might have heard about shreya singhal case right so there was a case also uh, the supreme court of india has you know given verdict and in that case we will discuss about like you know <coughs> like what verdict was given but the thing is before this let's talk about like what is the uh, like practice internationally what is the international practice related to i mean like you know child sexually abusive uh, like material okay see sam child sexually abusive material so like we will talk about two countries here right one of the countries united states then other is united kingdom so we will talk about like how uh, i mean like you know child sexually abusive material are being treated in those countries right so if we talk about united states they have a non profit not for profit organization they have an ngo name of the ngo is the national center for missing and exploited Child children okay ncmec national center for missing and exploited children so this is an ngo which is based in the united states of america this particular uh, you know uh, ngo operates a program which is known as cyber tip line okay it operates a program it is known as cyber tip line so under this program what they do they allow the public and the electronic service providers to report okay to report instances of suspected child sexual exploitation okay 
and under this the internet service providers isp in short okay isp uh, stands for internet service providers okay so internet service providers are mandated to report the identity and the location of individuals suspected of violating the law okay and also the nc mec may notify isps to block transmission of online csam okay so online child sexual abusive material are you know blocked are blocked by internet service providers on the request of this particular organization which is national center for missing of missing and exploited children so this is what is based in united states of america apart from this like if we talk about the united kingdom how the, how how do they tackle the child sexual uh, sexual abusive materials okay in united kingdom again they have a not for profit organization they have a ngo okay and that ngo is known as internet watch foundation okay so internet watch foundation is located in united kingdom and it is a not for profit organization the role of this particular organization is right uh, like it was established by the united kingdom's internet industry itself to ensure a safe online environment for users with a particular focus on csam it includes disrupting the availability of csam and deleting such content hosted in the uk the internet watch foundation engages the uh, analyst to actively search for criminal content not just rely on the reports from external sources okay so like they like employ multiple techniques for identifying whether there is any csam on the internet space in united kingdom so that they can you know remove those contents right apart from this like uh, you know <coughs> apart from this uh, the in hope there is something known as in hope this is a very important agency for this in hope it is a global network of 50 hotlines okay global network 50 hotlines means like they have mentioned you know contact numbers like so that like public at large can report the availability of any csam in the internet right it has 46 member countries it provides the public right with a way to anonymously report csam it provides secure it infrastructure and this it infrastructure is known as iccam I C okay C child sexual abuse material okay so uh, this is the short form of this okay I C child sexual ab abusive material so this is the thing so like you know in hope is a network of 46 countries who are working together day and night to remove the CCM from the internet space okay so in 2021 the number of exchange content and URL is to so they have mentioned about you know uh, the factual information related to csam but like if we talk about globally the united states of america has one ngo one non uh, not for profit organization that is working for removing the child sexual abusive material from the internet right it is known as the national center for missing and exploited children if we talk about the united kingdom they again have okay they again have a not for profit organization it is known as internet watch foundation iwf right they are also working in the same line apart from this like if we talk about this uh, like you know these countries right you know there are 46 countries who are member of in hope and in hope is a global network right global network that provides 50 hotlines okay for the public so that like anyone any public like who come across any csam they can directly report, report it anonymously to them and, and they will make it sure that those contents are removed from the internet okay so this is the thing after this uh, like uh, we will uh, discuss about like what are india's efforts so, so far in this regard like what has india done to reduce or to remove csam from the internet space so if you talk about that thing so we have multiple instances of such things one of the thing is like Supreme Court of India has given a judgment in Shreya Singhal case in 2015 and it has read down uh, section 79 clause 3 sub clause B of the IT Act to mean that the internet service provider only upon receiving actual information, actual knowledge of the court order or being notified by the appropriate government shall remove or disable access to illegal contents. Thus, ISPs are exempted from the liability of any third party information. Okay, so this is one instance from India. 
Apart from this, like there was a case also, there was a case law uh, in the Kamlesh Vaswani case. Okay, uh, so this case was, I mean, like decided upon in 2013. The petitioner in this case has sought a complete ban on pornography. So after court's intervention, the advisory committee constituted under Section 88 of the IT Act issued orders in March 2015 to ISPs. ISP means internet service providers to disable nine domain URLs which hosted contents in violation of the mor uh, you know morality and decency clause of article 19 clause 2 of the constitution okay so this is the thing apart from this like we have another uh, like you know uh, this uh, NGO it is known as Aram India okay Aram India is an NGO that is based in uh, based in Mumbai okay it is an NGO that partnered with IWF IWF was Internet Watch Foundation. So, Internet Watch Foundation is a not-for-profit organization based in United Kingdom. So, they are also working for removing, right, the content, CSAM contents from the internet, okay. So, this Aram India, they have partnered with IWF and launched India's first online reporting portal in September 2016 to report images and videos of child abuse, right. So, this is the thing. And then like if we talk about Ministry of Home Affairs, the Ministry of Home Affairs has also done a, a very good uh, you know, work in this regard. They have launched a national cyber crime reporting portal in September 2018 for filing online com complaints pertaining to child pornography or rape or gang rape etc. But the thing is later on this particular portal was made uh, general I mean like you know so that like cyber crime can be reported online. Okay. Then like you know they have also mentioned multiple other things right. So the uh, if we talk about the parliament of India in parliament also like they have uh, conducted a committee it is known as ad hoc committee of the Rajya Sabha. It was headed by Jairam Ramesh okay. So they have given a report in this regard and they have made wide ranging recommendations on the alarming issue of pornography on social media and it affects on children and society as a whole okay. So the thing is like you know these uh, these are the I mean like you know these are the steps that were taken by India you know through different means okay these are the steps that are taken by India. So with this like we will take another topic. Now before that uh, let us discuss about what needs to be done like you know what we need to do right to reduce the CCM from the internet space right. So according to the ninth edition of the report of international center for missing and exploited children on child sexual abusive material, model legislation and global review. More than 30 countries now require mandatory reporting of CSM by ISPs. Okay, So this is a global report. This particular report was released and this report says like more than 30 countries in the world require online uh, like you know mandatory reporting of CSM. Okay, they mention India also but the thing is India is not a signatory of this particular thing. Okay, India is is not a, a signatory. Then uh, there is an optional protocol of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child that addresses child sexual exploitation, okay, encourages state parties to establish liability of legal persons, okay. So like internationally also there are multiple practices that are in place, right. So people are somehow uh, trying to tackle the things. But the thing is like, you know, India should join this particular network which is known as In Hope. Right? We discussed like InHope has 46 countries as its members. It has 50 hotlines, right? And like you know, they together are working for removing the child pornography from the internet. But the thing is, like India has not yet joined. So it is the right time that India should join this particular, I mean, like you know, network in hope for removing the CSAM from the internet space. Okay. Why it is important? Because like we want to safeguard the society, right? So this is the thing. So with this. Like we will move to the uh, next topic. We will take another topic. This topic is also very important. Why it is important? Because like you know under this topic we will understand about the role of information and broadcasting ministry. And then like we will discuss about Prasar Bharti. So as of now what is happening like you know the, uh, there is a central government. There are many state governments. Some of the state governments have their own uh, TV channels. Okay, State governments have their TV channel through which they are telecasting uh, you know multiple programs of the government. They are uh, they might be you know doing uh, for example the, uh, they might be uh, telecasting the educational content also. 
then like you know central government also somehow you know like uh, partners with some of the let's say private uh, parties for uh, releasing information but like you know the information and broadcasting ministry has recently released a notification and in that notification it has mentioned that uh, you know uh, that no ministry or department of the governments at the center state or union territories and their associate entities should enter into broadcasting or distribution of broadcasting activities in future okay means like they are saying like you know uh, uh, like other than uh, the, uh, the government channels you know these government agencies should not telecast or broadcast information through private channels okay so they uh, they have mentioned that like you know those government entities that are already you know doing this particular thing so they are not yet debarred but like they are told like you know by this particular date by december 31st 2023 they should extract themselves okay they should extract means like you know uh, they should stop doing broadcasting from the private means or, or other channel okay so this particular advisory okay this was an advisory that was uh, released by the information and broadcasting ministry so this particular advisory was released because of two instances one of the instances like you know uh, this uh, like a view was given by the telecom regulatory authority of india try okay uh, like try has given a recommendation and the supreme court has also given a judgment in the cricket association of bengal case and the law ministry of india has given a legal opinion in this behalf okay so according to this like you know they have released this particular notification okay like if we talk about like some of the state governments that have their own tv channels or you know broadcasting networks then tamil nadu has a kalvi tv and arasu cable and andhra pradesh governments have iptv okay so these are the things so stating that the information and broadcasting ministry was nodal agency for all matters related to broadcasting okay so information and broadcasting ministry has mentioned that like it is the nodal ministry for all you know uh, like broadcasting related aspects so this advisory sa said that the power of legislation on issue of post and telegraph telephones wireless broadcasting and other like forms of communication an exclusive privilege to grant licenses in respect of telegraph and power means like you know it rested with the center means like this particular ministry okay so this is just an information for us to understand that like you know there is a information and broadcasting ministry and then this ministry has rights related to i mean allowing the government state government i mean like to telecast through its own channel okay and to regulate the affair of broadcasting by you know different ministries right and their departments at different level okay so this is the thing so you can read it in your free time so apart from this like we will talk about this article this is the next article which is very important for us so terrorism is the worst form of human rights violation okay we will understand this topic so when we talk about this topic i mean like here you can see uh, like you know uh, like honorable uh, home minister right mr amit sa so he is interacting with the i mean like you know uh, with the head of the interpol right with the head of interpol so what is interpol interpol stands for international criminal police organization or international police organization okay so interpol is having a week long session i mean like for, i think for its foundation okay foundation day so uh, so interpol's uh, 90th general assembly is happening and in that general assembly like india has participated the home minister of india has also participated and like you know the home minister of india has mentioned some of the important changes that interpol should bring about because like if you talk about india from india the central bureau of investigation okay cbi is the nodal agency that uh, that you know uh, that co cooperates or coordinates with interpol okay cbi is an agency nodal agency that coordinates with interpol okay so like there are multiple countries across the world who are members of interpol but the thing is like each member country has their own setup right that uh, uh, that cooperate with interpol so home minister of india has suggested that like there should be a global uniform global network right uh, uh, of 
exchanging the real time information with interpol across the countries so that like you know, real time exchange of information happens related to matters that are of concern for interpol and different enforcement agencies across jurisdictions right so that like criminal activities can be uh, criminal activities can be tackled right so this was one suggestion apart from this the home minister of india has also suggested that like there should be a uniform definition there should be a single uniform definition of terrorism if we talk about terrorism so it is considered differently by different countries and like you know there is no uniform definition related to terrorism and like india has moved a resolution in the united nations general assembly related to uh, defining terrorism and a clause that talks about i mean like unifying the definition so that like you know uh, the global body united nations general assembly can identify like you know which are terrorist organizations which are not but like that has not yet been adopted because like you know there is no uniform there is no clarity what constitutes uh, like you know uh, there is no clarity related to definition of terrorism this is the thing so uh, the home minister uh, mentioned that terrorism is the worst form of human rights violation okay so he said that our general consensus would have to be developed on the definitions of terrorism and terrorist okay this is the thing he has also mentioned that like you know some people say uh, small terrorism big terrorism you know uh, uh, then like uh, good terrorism bad terrorism so the so there uh, there has to be a uniformity there has to be a uniformity related to definition of terrorism and we also need to achieve a consensus on the cross border propagation of terrorist ideologies through online radicalization we cannot consider this as a political problem so like you know here uh, like you know the home minister of india has suggested like why there should be a uniform definition of terrorism and terrorist and apart from this like you know uh, why interpol needs nod nodal agencies you know for sharing information on real time basis okay for counter uh, you know for countering terrorism across borders okay so views were exchanged okay views were exchanged uh, uh, between the home minister of india and the head of the interpol right related to this so like you know the assembly is happening means like a meeting is happening related to interpol so there india has you know uh, like put forward its view so interpol is in international criminal police organization this is an organization i mean like you know that coordinates with the, its member countries related to some of the wanted people right some of the suspects who may have fled their own jurisdiction who let's say were earlier based in india but like after doing some crime they have gone to some other country so interpol helps you know the these countries to identify and locate those um, i mean like you know criminals or wanted people across the jurisdiction then they also have an organ that uh, i mean like you know supports in uh, operations related to anti money laund uh, laundering okay so this is the thing with this let us take one question this question is important for the prelims exam so we'll we'll take a discussion of this question so it says with reference to great indian bustard consider the following statements so we have read a article related to great indian bustard we have discussed about its you know like uh, like protection status the conservation status or the level of threat that it faces right so the first statement says its iucn status is endangered okay so after reading the article you might have noticed that great indian bustard is a critically endangered species okay it is a critically endangered species okay um, in iucn red list okay it is mentioned in appendix 1 of sites it is mentioned in schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 1972 so and it has only 200 uh, like you know uh, 200 individuals globally and more than 150 individuals are located in desert national park in india right so this is the thing second it says it has been identified as one of the species for recovery program under the integrated development of wildlife habitats of the ministry of environment forest and climate change government of india this is right so we need to identify the correct statement okay true statement so only statement 2 is correct it means option b is the right statement option b is the right answer for this question okay so 
with that like we have discussed all the topics that were important for uh, october 22nd the hindu newspaper analysis okay so that's all from my side today thank you so much everyone for attending today's session i hope you have a great day ahead thank you